how to grow your confidence as a teacher. Well, let's let's face it. Um, you know, no matter how much teaching you may have hopefully done in your yoga teacher training, you're probably going to feel really freaked out when it's time to actually do your teaching demos, your teaching interviews, and and actually just going in to teach. Um, I have been teaching for 18 years, I think. Oh my God, how did I get this old? And uh, I still get really nervous. And so um, there's that one side that I think is actually really important to acknowledge is that whether we're talking about yoga teaching or, or anything in our life, that, that most of us have, I mean, I haven't met anyone yet, a very terrified, insecure part of ourselves that, that can really start freaking out inside. Um, and that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to express that and start freaking out in front of everyone. But that's where meditation becomes so wonderful because you can start to observe that part of you that is freaking out so much and is so terrified. And when we start to, especially when we're feeling really nervous, if we can remind ourselves, okay, this is just a part of me, it's not all of me, and we start to ground ourselves, which in that, I offer different grounding practices um, on different videos. Um, but, but in simple terms, like even just feeling the breath, okay, I'm feeling my sit bones, I'm feeling my feet, I'm feeling my legs, like just starting to drop back down. I'm, I'm letting my front body soften into my back body. When we start to ground, there can be also the remembrance that we're able to observe. And so this part of us that's terrified or in pain, we actually have a little space from. It's no longer encompassing us. And we can actually have some space and actually witness that part of us that's really scared. And it sounds so simple, but probably one of the best game changers for me was just starting to love myself inwardly. I mean, right, like how many how many workshops and books are there like love yourself, right? But but like in all honesty, like when when you're starting to freak out, because there might be a part of us that's like trying to mask it or like kill it or hide it or you know sell it or you know just do something but like let's not have it here and and I just I'm like oh you know like you're a sweet little cat like totally freaking out as usual and and it's it's like then a part of me just kind of calms down like I've got you because we want to start to tell our nervous system like hey you know what like we can show up anywhere and I've, I've got you I've got me you know no matter what like I've got me and, and that's also, and if you've been with me before, you've heard me talking about how important it is to really cultivate that ability to be your own best friend. You know, that especially in those moments, and, and I know I've had them, I'm, I, I would imagine you have, where like you feel like the whole world is against you or like everything's just falling apart. And it's just like, okay, but you know what? I've got me, you know, and maybe my cat, but I've got me. So it's, it's very important especially if you're about to go teach that you don't kind of kick yourself when you're down you know or um it's really challenging because we might want to like compensate a little bit and and then we won't be very authentic while we're teaching so to look to use that part that's a little bit nervous and a little bit shy and a little bit terrified as like an access to your own vulnerability and, and that the more you can actually be real about your own vulnerability, that also gives permission to anyone else you're around. Like other people can drop their mask, their charade, and they can, they can have access to it as well. So it, it, it creates a little bit of a, a refreshing opening when you step into the room and it's like, yeah, okay, I'm acknowledging that I've got this here. Now, the other thing is also just, and, and if you've been studying with me, you know that this is like, you know, a main thing that before you teach, when you walk in the room, you do not just start chatting to everyone and, and uh, you know, like getting people's props and listening to all their stuff. No, you go in 
and you sit down and you take some time to ground and you breathe and you acknowledge all that's here because you might have had like a special day, you know, and then once you feel that ground and that center, then you can start to tune into your students and it's from that place that you teach. And I don't know if everyone does this, but you know, for a lot of us, it's very easy for us while we're teaching to overly like just give ourselves away where it's like, instead of us being in our center while we're teaching, it's like, we kind of just throw our center around the room. It's like, here you go guys, it's like confetti. So, so just to kind of check in, like, you know, use your breath, you know, am I breathing while I teach? Sounds so simple, but a lot of times we'll just be teaching and we just won't really like stop and take a breath. We'll just keep teaching and giving. And then we're like, wow, oh my God, like my voice kind of hurts and I don't really know what's going on. Right? So the more we slow down and feed ourselves with our own breath, we give ourselves our time. Our students will feel that. I mean, there's a beautiful mirroring. It's like the quantum physics, like anything, there's a reflection that's constantly happening. So that, that we don't have to ever compromise or give ourselves up ever when we're teaching. We get to stay in our center. And the other side, you know, along with kind of like that, that self-work is um, there is a very practical side that, that teaching like anything takes practice. And when you first start out as a teacher, you're still learning how to sequence. You're still learning pacing. You're still learning how to read a room. You're still learning. You're still terrified to make adjustments. You're still, there might be a voice of you that's like, am I going to fuck things up? You know, like there's probably a part of you that just wants everyone to like you because I think most of us have that. So there is just that practical side. And, and honestly, the only thing that's going to get you through this one is you've got to practice. Like you will only grow your confidence by teaching. The teachers that I've seen succeed after trainings are the ones that went out and taught and they taught a lot. And that just helped them kind of get in the groove of it, get them in the rhythm of it. Because there are going to be, there's definitely going to be challenges that you get. You know, in some ways, like our greatest power is just showing up and committing and realizing that there is some part inside of us that can handle it. And, and we definitely get to meet that part of us that's terrified about being seen, you know, and, and that fear of rejection and that fear of our own power and all the different games and masks that we play. And then as teachers, we also get to have our wounds because just because you're a teacher just doesn't mean anything other than you get to maybe be more aware of your wounds. I hope so. So when you're teaching, you get to notice those students that might trigger you and freak you out and, and, and how do you get to meet that? And that's a whole other story, but just know that, that you can handle it. And that this is also the invitation for you to be you. And if you have some sort of story that you gotta be perfect, just know that that is a really exhausting, I'm telling you personally, it's a very exhausting, draining and boring story. Allow yourself to come in and just connect with yourself, connect with others. And I, I always just, especially if I'm a little tired and I'm like, I don't really feel like teaching right now. Let's, let's face it. I know every teacher out there, every teacher out there, we have those moments where we're like, really, can I just go like stay in bed or I don't know, go have some fun elsewhere. So it's like, my thing is I'm going to go have fun while I teach and, and, and that I'll set intentions, especially in really challenging days, you know, like help me get nourished by this as well. Like, let me have some fun with this. Let, let me discover something new. What am I going to learn? And, and even those really gnarly challenging classes, like they're going to teach you something. And that's, what's so exciting is that it's so raw and fresh. It is so raw and fresh, and this is your opportunity to really meet this cool challenge and puzzle. And it's like no class is ever the same, you know, and, and you get to meet people and you get to be with them. And, and it's just such an adventure. So I just say, if you feel nervous, you know what? I, got, I hear you totally. You know what? I'm terrified most of the time. Use that energy. Use that nervousness as energy to feed you. 
And uh, I used to have a trapeze coach that would purposefully piss me off just so that I wouldn't get so distracted by my nervousness. Now, I'm not going to say, like, go get angry. But I would say if you're someone who's suppressing their anger and, like, tries to be sweet and nice all the time, eh, might be time to go be friends with your anger as well. Again, a whole other talk. So I hope that I gave you some interesting tidbits and sending greetings from Bali.